My family's connection with the City of Hope goes back for well over 100 years. On my mother's side of the family, they were instrumental in the roots of the City of Hope. And coincidentally, on my father's side of the family, they were extremely involved with the hospital. My grandfather, Eric Flagg, would always host the Regal Balls for the City of Hope. My grandparents' generation and great-grandparents' generation were a bunch of Jews, many from the Holocaust, that were members of Brentwood Country Club and Hillcrest Country Club, and they all came together and donated their time and money and resources to support this wonderful institution. I was really close with my grandmother. In fact, I loved hanging out with both of my grandparents' size, the Platts and the Flags. Most kids are not that interested in their grandparents and great-grandparents, but I guess I'm just an old soul. Being who my grandparents were, they were extremely philanthropic and involved with fundraising for the hospital. It's important for people to do things like this, and for me, it was never a choice, it was an obligation. And it's just something you owe to your community and you have to do. This man, Ben Platt, he's quite a guy, as you all know. What I have to tell you gentlemen about our mutual friend, B.P., at the age of 20, when he came over to America, he accepted a position with the Singer Sewing Machine Company. Bear in mind that at that time, our language was foreign to him, but despite that handicap, he did a phenomenal selling job. B.P., who knows opportunity, he took on radio and he was merchandising and doing a big job while a lot of music stores were still holding their noses in the air. Grebe probably was the biggest selling radio in all of Southern California, and it was exclusively sold by the Platt Music Company. Ben had a habit of doing things in a big way. I have here several letters from the chairman, the directors, and others complimenting and thanking Ben Platt for his activities in the American Cancer Society. Ben Platt has been the treasurer of City of Hope. He was president of the Merchants, Manufacturers, and Professional Men's Club, which was a money raising group for the great City of Hope Hospital. He was on the campaign committee for a number of years of the American Cancer Society, and he never ceases, and he does it in the same casual but determined manner that he has demonstrated in his business itself. To see these ingenious, these hardworking businessmen join with Ben Platt in first seeking to build a Sinai temple. And I believe that they gave to that activity all of the energy and all of the ingenuity that they gave to their respective businesses. And Ben Platt is the honorary life president. We have many great businessmen and we have many good men, but it's very difficult to find a combination of a great and a good man. And that's Ben Platt. So right now you're standing in front of our Helford Clinical Research Hospital. As you know, we started in 1913 focused on tuberculosis. And the idea was really to put a tuberculosis patient out in the dry, arid climate. So patients came from the East Coast to the West Coast, particularly hit by tuberculosis with people who lived in like the tenement structures in the East Coast, a lot from New York and that area. And ultimately over the years, this term, you look a little cold. Maybe we should go inside. <laughs> it's okay. Are you sure? <laughs> we're good. <laughs> ultimately, the name City of Hope stuck because we, we were like like this little city, but we were originally called uh, the Jewish Consumptive Relief Association. Thank you, the JCRA. So we transitioned to City of Hope in like the late 1930s, 1940s. Today we're non-denominational, you know, institution, but we have some beautiful areas for spiritual reflection. But we're very good at taking care of the, the heart, the soul, the mind, the spirit, all of really the elements that make us, you know, uh, the human beings that we are. And one of the things we really exceed at is translating from the researcher's bench to the patient's bedside. Literally, a guy in that building is coming up with a cure for cancer right now that we actually have the capacity to walk across the street and deliver to a patient that's literally in our hospital right Amazing. now. So we have this extremely quick and robust bench to bedside process. And one of the reasons we exceed at that or excel at that is because we have our own drug development capabilities on campus so we can create that drug right here to bring to a clinical trial. We really try and focus and make sure that you know each person is given a specialized individualized care. All the patients to be able to see where their medicine is coming from or their drugs are being created right here. Patients like they could be out here any time of night and there's gonna be lights on in those research buildings because those researchers sometimes are just working around the clock. But we think it's really inspirational for patients to know Absolutely. that these buildings are full of people diligently working on that next treatment. Well, touring the campus today, we actually got to sit down with a patient and talk about their experiences 
on the campus. Yeah, this is a bit of uh, a full circle moment for me. 2013, I was diagnosed with leukemia. I was 34 years old at the time. I didn't drink or smoke. I was a marathon runner. At the time, I was a uh, provider producer at Bravo. Oh, really? Really? So I did promos for, you know, Cracker Runway, Top Jet, and sure. MDL LA. Really? Yeah, so I worked on promos with you in it from, you know, from the beginning. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, overnight, six days, I was diagnosed with leukemia. They admitted me on a Friday, doing chemo on a Monday. And then I said, you need a transplant. And uh, my brother was a 25% chance of saving my life. And uh, he was a full match. So over the next few years, was uh, trying to recover. And this is a hospital, but uh, it's my sanctuary. This is the floor I got my, um, my transplant. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you for oh, sharing. Anyways, so, you know, when you first started your first season, I was working on it. So, it's wow. Nice. It's, uh, <laughs> it's cool. I appreciate that. That's a cool, full circle moment. No, it's, I'm really happy that I got to come. See, I've never actually been to City Hall. Obviously, it's like, you know. It's not just an institution. It's really like, by home, you know? That's amazing. Do you have to take any medications or drugs still, or that's it? At the time, I was taking 40 pills a day. But today? Well, is there one pill. One pill? We'll have to share your story with our, we have a good friend, Michelle, who she actually planned our wedding, but now she's like a family friend. And in February of 2020, she got diagnosed with leukemia out of nowhere. And it was kind of the same thing <clears throat> where she, oh my God, I'm gonna get emotional, but where she went in and it just changed her whole life. And so she's like now on her year two. Incredible, thank you for coming. That's a couple course. Yeah, that's amazing, really appreciate it. Today was an eye-opening experience, and it was amazing to see what an impact this has had on not only my life, but many others. I'm a firm believer of doing what you can and giving as much as you can. If you're wanting to help contribute to the City of Hope, go to the link below, and thanks for watching.